Hi everyone, it's Alex Sidorenko from Risk Academy and this is my day two wrap up uh, where I uh, prepared my notes and uh, I'm going I'm going to give you a quick overview of what happened in day two at the Risk Awareness Week and answer all your questions. So we are live, ask away. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn, um, or if you're watching this on the conference website, um, ask questions. You know, don't hold back. You know, I, I think I answered all the questions from yesterday. Uh, if I haven't, then um, I'll ask again. All right. So day two. Um, day two is uh, one of my favorites. I mean, you can kind of guess that day three is my favorite because because it's all about quantitative uh, risk analysis. Um, but day two is one of my favorites because this is what I've been trying to communicate to the risk community uh, for years, that outside of ISO and COSO and all the other risk management guidelines and standards and regulations, there, is, there are whole sciences that have contributed more to the profession of risk management than any risk management standard or legislation on the planet. So there is this whole field of study called behavioral economics or neuroeconomics or neuroscience. There, there are different kind of angles of basically studying how human brain works and how, how our, our biology, our hormones and genes, how all of that affects human ability to identify risks, to analyze risks, to uh, come up with mitigations, to take action, to take ownership of the risks. And it's not a good news. It's not really good news. All, all of this research, by the way, two Nobel uh, Prizes in economics, uh, Vernon Smith and Daniel Kahneman in 2002 and uh, uh, Richard Taller in 2014, I don't know, correct me if in, in the comments if, if I got that wrong. Uh, two Nobel Prizes in economics for the research, the research that has a huge and direct and immediate impact on the risk profession. And yet we are, we as community of risk professionals are kind of just vaguely discovering and, you know, I so finally mentioned that, um, you know, cognitive biases are Athenian and, uh, um, Koso finally mentioned that you have to think about biases when identifying and assessing and, and so on. Um, and these fields of study are much, much older than corporate risk management. So they are the older brother, not risk management. They're much older brother, much more experienced, much more scientific and much more sophisticated. Um, with, with the caveat, you know, not every research into cognitive biases, you know, system one, system two thinking has been replicated. So they, there are, they, they have their own issues, uh, but nevertheless, it's an area that we as risk professionals or anybody making decisions under uncertainty simply cannot ignore. And uh, how do I know that this is all serious and very important uh, is because CIA spends a lot of money and effort studying how humans make decisions under uncertainty. And in fact, one of the one of their publications, their book, their textbook called the Purple Book, uh, is one of the best textbooks on cognitive biases that I've ever read, and it's available for free online. Um, just you know, Google it, CIA Purple Book. So day two is uh, very exciting. Uh, is very exciting for me because I try to accumulate different speakers who can contribute to this kind of to this discovery so this is some even if you haven't watched the workshops you know just save it because you know again risk awareness week is 21st century virtual conference which means that you can re-watch any of the workshops that you missed at any stage in fact risk awareness week by design is not intended to be watched live because it goes in the European time zone. That means it's uh, very early for US, very late for Australia, and only kind of the, the you know, Europe to Asia can, and, and Africa can benefit from the, uh, from the timing. That means that 
Now, you do not have to wake up at like 3 a.m. You don't have to go to bed at 1 a.m. Makes no sense. You just watch it the following day uh, or you watch it the following week. Because it's virtual, because it's been designed in a way that you can watch it on your phone, you can um, stream it to your TV, you can open it on your TV, you can watch it on your tablet, on your computer, anywhere. You know, we had people watching it from the airport waiting for the plane. So, and... Um, Another fascinating thing, like I, I, I'm obviously seeing all the statistics of attendance and uh, people engagement. I'm seeing that there are less people uh, today than there were yesterday, uh, which in my mind is just crazy because they are completely independent, separate topics. And tomorrow will all about will be all about quantitative risk analysis and how like practically build models for solving complex issues you know i'm for example i'm going to talk about how we saved uh three million dollars on just one type of insurance we actually ended up saving 13 on the overall insurance portfolio but i'm just going to talk about one case um we doubled the limits improved the quality of coverage um didn't touch the deductibles and still saved reduced the price by seven times uh, or six times, I can't remember, but the, the, the dollar amount was $3 million per year. Uh, so humongous, humongous savings. And so tomorrow is going to be much more interesting than it was uh, today for two different group of people. So you know, don't, don't go downhill, just save up the workshops, you know, register for all the workshops that you want to see. And... Um, Kind of have your calendar. You can you can spread your calendar for I don't know for a month or so. Um, and thank you, Nebras, for for commenting. I really appreciate that. Uh, anybody else who's watching, I know most of the people are watching on LinkedIn and on the conference website. Um, you know, do, don't feel shy. Uh, ask uh, questions. Write comments and um, uh, participate you know be 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 proactive this is what risk awareness week is all about you have this amazing opportunity to ask questions to the speakers and you can ask them you know, a day later a week later a month later i'm monitoring those things and i'm forwarding the questions to the speakers and then i'm kind of copy pasting you know, the speakers uh, come directly onto the platform and answer or i copy paste their responses into into the conversation so Day two, uh, very exciting because like, if you haven't seen any of the workshops, prepare for your mind to be blown away. Um, so, and um, a lot of workshops and what I try to do is exactly the same what I did yesterday and what I'm going to do tomorrow is I've tried to, instead of kind of going through the chronological order, I try to regroup uh, because you know I haven't seen the workshops before they were delivered, uh, or I've only seen some of them that were pre-recorded. Um, I, I wish I would have grouped them. Like if I knew what the content was, I would have grouped it uh, a little bit differently. Because so now I have created this kind of logical narrative, and then uh, I'm giving you my recommendation on on what the uh, sequence of workshops that will kind of fit it all together. You start with the theoretical, kind of high level, and then go into practical, specific application. That's the that's the idea. Start with theoretical, go into practical application, and uh, ha follow kind of a logical narrative. So the first workshop I recommend uh, to watch, which just happened to be the first workshop on the day, was Michelle Wooker. Michelle Wooker is uh, an author of the, this you know, bestseller uh, book called um, um, uh, Gray Rhino, uh, which was a huge hit after Tal Talib's Black Swan. Um, Arena, thank you. Um, this is the fourth year. <laughs> this is the fourth year. So the idea is not new. Uh, I'm I'm very proud that this conference has been going virtual, global, uh, and had about 5,000 participants uh, from 120 countries every year for about four years, uh, long before COVID, and it became sexy to have an online conference. Uh, as of today, we have 3,856 uh, participants, uh, which is great. And uh, people continue joining every kind of every few minutes. And that's exactly what we want, because the idea is spreading risk awareness, you know, raising risk awareness across uh, across the globe. So, you know, if you watch the workshop and you liked it, you know, just share, share to your heart's uh, content. 
So Michelle Walker, uh, amazing author. Uh, I love her books. And uh, um, she talked about the kind of the essence of her second um, uh, second book, um, which oh, I forgot the I forgot the name. But the um, you, no, you you are what you risk because I, I've just read it. I've just read it uh, um, a month and a half ago, or a month ago, and um, I was amazed when uh, we actually managed to kind of fit the, the risk awareness into Michelle's uh, schedule. So she talked about um, three very important uh, messages. And, and, and she's basically saying, uh, and you know, watch, watch the workshop to find out uh, in more detail. But the, the key takeaways for me were, there are ultimately kind of three things that affect your risk attitude. Uh, any person's risk attitude, and she calls it the uh, risk fingerprint, uh, kind of your unique uh, blend of I don't know, risk attitude, risk appetite. You know, call it call it call it whatever you want. And the three things are the um, kind of the, the the genes and the personality traits. And for that, uh, we're going to kind of diverge into the next workshops that I'm going to talk about. Uh, Diana Deral did a, a, a very lovely, uh, concise workshop on the biology uh, and anatomy effect and influence on our risk perception, risk attitude. And uh, it, the biggest takeaway for me was our risk attitude is uh, more influenced by our mother's genes than by our father's genes. So you know, some of these things are just really mind-blowing stuff. And like when you know, when you start discovering and investigating and reading into that, a lot of the things suddenly become um, clear. It, it just like you, you thought your boss ignored your risk recommendations because he was a bad person or you weren't good enough, um, but that's just not it. You, once you start investigating how human brain actually works at the chemical level, you realize that that's just normal, typical, in fact, very rational, well, sorry, predi very predictable, but completely irrational uh, behavior by, uh, by a person. So it's worth investigating. So, and then uh, the second, the second divi kind of uh, fork in the road is that Jeff Tricky uh, did another workshop also today uh, on the uh, personality traits, or he calls it um, uh, risk disp disposition. So every person has uh, a their own kind of risk disposition, their um, attitude, their perception, like their blend of risk attitudes for, for that specific person. By the way, I, I did uh, Jeff's test just after the, his workshop, and I highly recommend you doing that as well because uh, every Risk Awareness Week participant has you know, special code. Watch his presentation, find the special code, and uh, um, do do the test. I quite enjoyed it. I, I sent it to all my risk management friends, and I said, you know, does this look like me? And uh, I'm waiting for their response. OK, so um, Michelle said three messages. Um, three things affect our kind of risk fingerprint or risk attitude. It's the personality trait and the kind of the chemical composition of our hormones and genes and microbiome. Um, it's the experience and habits and the surrounding environments. And ignoring these three things when you want decision makers to appreciate risks, account for risks, uh, consider risks and use the risk information when making decision is a big mistake. So this is the first workshop that I recommend. Then the second workshop that I recommend kind of flowing on from there is Diana Deral, who talked about how genes, hormones, and micro microbiomes uh, affect our risk perception and you know, any human risk perception attitude uh, at the very kind of chemical fundamental level. So yeah, very important study uh, studies and uh, reach out to Diana for more information. Uh, she, she's, she's given a very nice, concise, uh, quite a short workshop, which you can just you know, you know, watch on the go and uh, listen to. Like there's no, there's no um, complex vi visual, um, uh, slides associated with that, so you can literally just listen to it while I don't know running in the park. It's it's one of those pieces of knowledge that may change your life forever. Then the third workshop that I recommend is understanding your risk 
your team risk types by Jeff Tricky. So he um, developed a model where um, you can actually assess somebody's risk disposition or their attitude towards risk taking. Uh, and uh, it, it really helps to explain why certain industries, why certain humans, why certain professions prefer and uh, approach risk in a different um, uh, context and how much it, it influences your uh, your risk analysis. And as I said, uh, so watch this session, fascinating stuff, um, very important to keep in mind because when you're talking to traders versus talking to maintenance personnel about different you know, market risk versus operational risk, this will be completely different conversations. They will, uh, you would need to, um, e even let's even simplify that. You talk about operational risk and you talk about insurance and you talk about you know cargo insurance or some liability insurance with the commercial department. And then you're talking about property damage and business interruption insurance with the production department. The same math, the same numbers, you would need to repackage completely uh, differently for these audiences. So this is a very important workshop. And at the end of the workshop, um, you get a link uh, to do a self-assessment to understand what well, what's your risk type. Um, I, I'm going to tell you what mine is. Hold on. Um, pum, pum, pum. My risk type is adventurous risk type cameo. I mean, it sounds pretty cool. I I I um, I've just started reading and what it actually means, uh, but. I mean, why not? It, it, it sounds like sounds like me. Uh, so first three, uh, three workshops. And by the way, don't forget when you watch the workshops and you found it useful and you like the content, don't forget to upvote because everybody uh, then uh, sees they, when they go to the replay page, they can kind of see the prioritization of, of you know, which workshops got more likes. Uh, so you, know, you, you support the speakers a lot by um, uh, by giving them the, the the upvotes. All right, let me see if there are any. Okay, Tamira, thank you for uh, providing the link uh, to the risk type compass. Thank you very much. Okay, my number four. Number four, uh, so we basically, we said, you know, we started with Michelle, uh, who said, it's the, you as the person with your personality and your genes that affect how risks are perceived. And, and like, make no mistake, some people could be completely blind to obvious risks, not because they're bad people, just because that's kind of, that's how evolution created that specific uh, specific person. Uh, and so this is very important. If, if it's our job as risk professionals to get the message across, uh, and if we don't account for that, if we don't even consider the fact that we may be misheard or uh, our point could be completely missed because we don't speak the language of the, uh, of the uh, receiving uh, of the person on the receiving end, um, all of the amazing work, uh, could uh, go to waste. Uh, and quantitative risk analysis that we're going to talk about tomorrow, all of the day will be dedicated to different types of quantitative risk analysis, different techniques, very practical, down to earth, you know, specific techniques and tools. Um, all, all that could go to waste if we don't understand, like if we don't appreciate how to get the message, um, uh, message across. So we started with Michelle, who said there are three things that you need to do, like you, your, per, your person, the person's experience and the environment where the person is. Then Diana, uh, who talked about, well, what, what, is the, what, do, what do genes and hormones have to do with our risk perception? Then um, Jeff talked about the uh, personality traits and how different personalities view risks, um, view, view risks differently. A and then the kind of the fourth workshop in my recommended you know, sequence of events is uh, Kurt, Rass, uh, Kurt Nelson, who um, talked about 
uh, started kind of giving us an introduction into different cognitive biases. So he talks about loss aversion, availability heuristic, base rate fallacy, confirmation bias, hyperbolic discounting. If these phrases mean nothing to you right now, you must watch that workshop because these are just five out of dozens that risk managers have to be very mindful of because every conversation we have about identifying risks, about collecting data for risk analysis, about uh, you know, considering different options for mitigation, these biases affect every single conversation we have with the business and with the decision makers. So we need to be very mindful. We need to be able to recognize them and we need to be able to counteract them and, and kind of adjust our methodologies to counteract cognitive biases. So here's a very simple example. When I started uh, in, uh, in risk management, uh, well, actually not when I started, uh, about five years into my career, so 12 years ago, I uh, come across a number of organizations that would, would be sending out uh, risk and control self-assessments, basically like checklists and questionnaires. They just sent out to business units and then the business units uh, send them the information back about the risks and control and effectiveness and, and assessments and mitigations. And then they aggregate this together and then use this as kind of as the uh, consolidated risk something, I guess, risk register. Little did they know that there are so many cognitive biases involved in this process that render this whole process completely useless. In fact, it's probably worse than useless because you're probably better off not doing anything at all than collecting this rubbish nonsense completely um, mi misguided and um, and uh, um, and using that for, uh, for 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 any kind of decision making. Uh, so Nebras is asking where he can find the workshops. Uh, Here's the hint. Here, here's the hint. 2022riskawarenessweek.com. Uh, that's where a largest virtual risk conference in the world is happening yesterday, today, and the following three days. Don't uh, don't miss it. There are uh, at least so we 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 what we uh, seven yesterday was eight. Um, the, there are at least uh, 20 something workshops left uh, to watch. So my number four is Kurt Nelson. My number five is Christian Hunt um, because that kind of follows the nice logic. Uh, Kurt started the introduction into cognitive biases. Uh, Christian very enthusiastically and he's, you know, he's one of the most amazing speakers on the topic. Um, he picks up the, um, the the message gives you a little bit more context, gives very nice illustrations, examples from history on where cognitive biases play the very um, kind of dangerous games and you know, ruined lives and ruined businesses. And um, uh, tries to kind of bring it back, well, explaining, well, what, why is your boss, when you're trying to communicate risk information to them, why, why do your bosses ignore that information or misuse that information or don't do enough with the information. And he finishes with five ethical hacks, brain hacks. What can any risk manager do to first overcome his personal biases, but also help overcome executives, their biases. Then moving into the uh, space of um, uh, more practical application. So, and again, I, I, I want to make this explicitly clear. This is not because some you know, one is good and uh, seven is bad. No, that's not the logic. It's one is introduction into theory, a little bit more science examples, and then moving into practical application. So for me, in number six is Marcus Dim Dimbleby. Marcus Dimbleby, uh, who really, I mean, an amazing uh, presentation on red team thinking and being a contrarian and how um, some of the most you know, powerful militaries in the world uh, deal with uncertainty. And this is, uh, again, this is a very important illustration because you know, tomorrow 
we will talk about how we apply Monte Carlo simulations for different kinds of problems to simulate uncertainty and and uh, um, account for for risk and measure risk and make better decisions through that analysis and measurement. Monte Carlo method like method of uh, generating random numbers was created for military purposes and was borrowed from military. So military created a lot of important things and we borrow from them whenever we can. And so red team thinking is another concept developed in the military that we borrow and apply in corporate world. And it does amazing, uh, amazing job. So Marcus shared uh, a lot of practical techniques uh, and here are the four that uh, he talked about. Think, write, share. That's one. Uh, Pre-mortem, which I'm, I suspect most of you are familiar with because there's been quite a lot of literature on the topic. Um, devil's advocate and uh, devil's advocate and the, the role you know, a, a risk manager can play as a contrarian in the company. And uh, the final technique is never is called never assume. Um, something that resonates very much with the workshop that Grant Purdy did yesterday. So you know, it's it's kind of it's all interconnected in this overall knowledge base of what a risk manager needs to be aware of to deal with uh, uncertainty. So these are just kind of some of the skills that risk managers need to have to be able to fulfill their job uh, successfully. So number six for me is Marcus because he really kind of started going into very practical tools like here are the you know, four, four techniques that you can use immediately in your life or in your um, corporate career. And then finally, um, Sajid Iqbal finished with the kind of with a very specific practical application. He's well, when the markets are irrational, how do you deal with your uh, investment strategy as a corporation or as a person? How do you overcome biases and uh, um, market irrationality uh, to come up with the strategy that has uh, better uh, better results than than random. So watch uh, his workshops to find out more about kind of this practical application of uh, neuroeconomy, ne neurobiology, and uh, behavioral e economics. So that's my uh, quick overview of day two. Uh, I, I I very much enjoyed the workshops. I actually watched uh, uh, all of them, and I hope you did uh, too. I'm going to stick around online for a few minutes. If you have any questions, um, do ask away. And you can ask on either the conference website, you can ask on YouTube, on Facebook, on uh, um, uh, LinkedIn, and I'll see, I'll see the comments in front of you. So thank you to everybody who already said how they felt about the conference. Any other, any other feedback on, uh, on the conference, any other Thoughts? I mean, what, what was your favorite workshop from yesterday or today? Don't, don't be shy because like this, it's it's literally the easiest thing that you will need to do today is you know write a few words in Alex's webcast. Um, so don't feel shy. I, I see that there are a lot of people watching and I suspect a lot more engagement, um, uh, engagement from you. So any comments? Thank you. Um, somebody said it's their third year risk awareness week. It's a fourth one for me. Um, and by, by the way, 2019 is um, uh, completely free to watch and it's available both on the 2019.riskawarenessweek.com and, uh, um, and on the Risk Academy YouTube channel. And so is 2020. 2020 is available for free on the 2020.riskawarenessweek.com and on the Risk Academy uh, YouTube channel. So technically speaking, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from watching all four of them. Uh, and uh, uh, this is this is one of the kind of important things to me. I um, I originally made the decision to not follow the hype, and so we like we don't have 
workshops with sexy names on you know, ESG or climate change, because you know, I hope one day you will discover that the math behind these risks is actually exactly the same as you would use for like compliance risks or legal risks or intellectual property or cyber. Um, the underlying math, the underlying techniques are the same for most of the risks on the planet. And I would rather, we talked about the actual techniques. So for example, you know, Graham Keith is doing a, um, a session on uh, bow ties. You know, bow tie can help you deal with most of the risks on the planet. And uh, then I'm doing a session on um, um, on uh, building tailor-made simulation models. And that can help you deal with most of the risks uh, on the planet. And then um, um, Justin, uh, Justin Shell is going to show how he created a set of distributions and then anybody like he was the custodian of the distributions as the center and then everybody kind of was able to use that within the organization and you can do that with any risk and then tom keelin is going to show uh, and talk about metalogs and metalog is kind of this new generation of probability distributions that you can apply apply to any continuous risk and that kind of you can replace all your log normals perths uh, um, uh, Pareto's uh, and all, all the other continuous distributions with just a single uh, metalog if you're talking about kind of bootstrapping and using historical data. Uh, then Sam Savage is going to uh, give illustrations on how to move from single point estimates to ranges. All of this is fundamental knowledge um, that is applicable to whatever the you know the next risk uh, flavor of the month ri risk will be. Okay, thank you, Yazan, for question. Let me let me read it and respond to it. Um, is there any survey to measure risk culture within the organization? Uh, probably, as you know, as as a CRO, I've um, attempted to do it a couple of times. Um, didn't didn't really work for me. Um, because I because I think I've fallen into kind of this hype trap, and I was doing a you know a, a culture uh, a culture survey. Uh, you you are much better doing a uh, risk compass type study to understand the human um, uh, the human uh, kind of tendency uh, towards risk taking. And uh, uh, here is let me. Let me quickly create a link. Can I? Can I? Or is it too big? Uh, he, he's, he's the, here's the link. Um, but I think you can just Google risk type compass. Uh, and that has, because you know, I've completed I've completed the survey after the workshop by Je uh, that Jeff did uh, today. And it's like 90 questions. Um, uh, to measure your uh, risk attitude, your kind of your risk, uh, your risk perception. So, I mean, that would be a much better exercise. And I wouldn't do it as a separate survey. I always try and incorporate it into like existing HR surveys that they do for overall culture. Uh, anyway, so I hope that helps. Uh, any other thoughts or questions? All right, I don't see any more questions, so thank you very much. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. There will be workshops uh, throughout the day. Completely different theme, completely different topic. Today, tomorrow's topic is risk analysis. How do you actually measure uh, and quantify uncertainty? And how do you actually quantify risks? So if heat maps is not risk management, then what is? Well, tomorrow, there will be plenty of answers to that uh, question. Don't miss it. Thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow uh, in my daily summary webcast.